Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church. So no man can be the founder of the church. I am not the founder of the church. Nobody's pastor is the founder of the church. You only have one church and this building is not the church. Church is those that have repented of their sins and were baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ and have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue and then follow the doctrine of the apostles. Now, whatever Jesus gave his apostles, that's supposed to be the same thing in your church. Are you listening to the old man? The apostles didn't have no women preachers. Neither do we. Amen. Amen. Peter was a married man. Peter was a married man, but his wife wasn't called the first lady. Neither are ours. Are you listening to the old man? The apostles preached against the will of the flesh. So they didn't smoke, didn't drink, didn't gamble, wasn't living together, not married. Am I right, I said? Church and tradition are two different things. A lot of seminary school information have infiltrated church. There's more school information in church than Bible information. And most of the stuff that people are jumping and shouting over is not in the Bible. It's just in some seminary school. You see, school don't make preachers. Holy Ghost make preachers. The way you find whether a preacher is made by the Holy Ghost, evaluate all his teaching with that Bible. If he deviates from the Bible, I don't care if he scream like James Brown and moonwalk like Michael Jackson. He deviates from that Bible. He don't represent Christ. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? All right, let's get your recipe books open. Let us all walk by the same rule. Amen. Let us all walk. That's what I want to work on today because every church in Augusta is different. That's right. And no need to be a fool. Jesus only have one church, so all you Augusta preachers are supposed to have the same thing. That's right. I don't care if you're white as snow, black as the street, yellow as butter, or clear as water. Amen. If Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church, who gave you the right to be different from the Bible? That's right. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? Go ahead. The Bible have rules. Doctrine, laws to govern God's people. And Holy Ghost rules today is not governing the church, is the preacher's imagination, feelings, personal views, philosophy, ideology, supposition, say things that make you feel good. I don't go nowhere to make nobody feel good. We come to preach the word of God regardless to who like it or who don't like it. You see, most men preach and they're scared to hurt your feelings. We'll run your feelings out of your body. Are you listening? Everything in the pulpit might as well judge themselves also. This ain't a gospel for you only. It's for you and them up here. 
Because do you know, if you give people information and they die with it, and it's wrong, the preacher going to go to hell for telling them? That's right. That's right. Are you listening to the old man? That's right. This preaching business is sincere business. It's not that T.D. Jakes trash or that Creflo old dollar trash. No, this is judgment work. You're going to give an account to God for the deeds done in your body. You beer guzzling Christians. You fornicating loving Christians. Are you listening? Amen. You cigarette sucking, church going, bed hopping Christians. You ankle chair, ankle chain, prostitute looking Christians. You fake hair wearing Christians. Makeup wearing Christians. Homosexual. Christians. I want to soak you a little. You can shout next week. Follow me in your Bible. Amen. All right. In the book of Philippians, chapter 3. And we'll start reading at verse 15. All right, let's go to work. Let us therefore as many as be perfect. Let be, us therefore as many as be complete. Be thus minded. Be mindful. And if anything ye be otherwise minded. If ye be otherwise minded. God shall reveal even this unto you. God gon' make it known. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. Whereto we have already attained. Had what? Let us walk by the same rule. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, listen to the old man. Amen. Let us walk. Let us walk by the same rule. What Jesus gave his apostles, the entire state of Georgia is supposed to have. That's right. You're not supposed to go in no church and find another religion, another belief. Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran, non-denominational, Pentecostal, Apostolic, Seventh-day Adventist, Mormon, Muslim, Jehovah Witnesses, a comic book religion. Amen. Amen. Whatever Jesus was, that's what you're supposed to be. Did Jesus say he was Baptist? Why are you? Did Jesus say he was non-denominational? Why are you? Did Jesus say he was Protestant? Why are you? Did Jesus say he was Catholic? Why are you? Did Jesus say he was apostolic? Why are you? Amen. Did Jesus say he was Lutheran? Why are you? Did Jesus say he was non-denominational? Why are you? That's right. Are you listening? That's right. These are things we never thought about. Yeah. We went to church, we clapped, we shout, and we never asked questions. We jump and shout and fall out and give money and never ask the preacher questions. Why are you professing a religion that never exists in your Bible? Amen. Think. Amen. Amen. If God is our father, is he not? Yes. Yes. And we are the children of God. Shouldn't we be what our heavenly father is? Yes. So ask yourself, what is God? Give me Leviticus. In Leviticus chapter 19. I don't want to make up nothing. Yeah. If anybody disagree with me or want to question me, you got your privilege to do what you're not allowed to do in your church. Raise your hands and stop me whenever you're ready. Interrupt me whenever you're ready. I'll pick up any question you got and strip it down with Bible and push it back on your way again. That's right. If 
You can't question a man about what he preached. Stop giving him money. Amen. I listen to what I'm telling you. Amen. Whatever man preach, you got your Bible right. Yes. To question him from A to Z. That's right. See, is what he's telling you lined up according with the Bible, or did it come from a college? That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? That's right. What did the Holy Ghost say? In Leviticus chapter 19, and we'll start at verse 1. All right. And the Lord spake. No, Gino, Jen, and spake. And the Lord spake. No, Pastor Gino, Nicolius, Jen, and spake. And the Lord spake. Get me out of it. Amen. The Lord spake. Unto Moses. Unto Moses. Saying, speak unto all speak the congregation. Speak unto all the congregation. Of the children of, of, the Israel, children of Israel. And say unto them. What did the Lord say? Tell them. Ye shall be holy. Why? For I, the Lord your God, am holy. Who told you you? are what you are. Amen. You Baptist, Methodist, non-denominational, apostolic, and all this other junk. Yeah. Who told you you was that? Amen. In fact, who gave you the right to claim you that? That's right. That's right. If the Lord said, be holy, Ooh. then gave you the reason why. For I, the Lord, your God, For I, the Lord, your God, am holy. He had holy apostles. That's right. Now, an apostle is one that God called, God sent, God anointed, God instructed, God made, given the authority from authority to represent authority. Amen. That's one that God sent. That's a person. Amen. But there's no religion that's called apostolic. No. Nowhere in your Bible. That's right. I want to soak you a little. That's right. You can shout next year. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. John was called John the Baptist because he was a baptizer. His occupation was a baptizer. That's right. But you don't have a religion nowhere in the Bible called Baptist. Amen. Not one. That's right. Every Baptist church in Georgia ought to padlock your doors. It ain't a Baptist preacher or a Baptist member that's baptized right tonight. Go ahead. Why would you profess a religion? That never exists in your book. Amen. Talk back to me. Amen. You say you Jehovah Witnesses knocking on people's doors early in the morning, interrupting their fishing grits. <laughs> Go to your Bible and see did Jesus or his apostles ever profess to be Jehovah Witnesses? Amen. We shout. We jump, you fall out, your eyes get all white. And nobody never stop. It's my religion in the Bible. I debate religions all around the world. Right. And I always ask them one question. Show me your religion in the Bible. That's right. Don't bring me Webster. I don't care nothing about Webster. <laughs> bring me Jesus. Amen. Bring me what's written. That's it. The Bible said we profess a good profession before many witnesses, and this is our witness right here. That's right. If it's not in the Bible, get out of it. Get out. I don't care if your family in it, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your slap happy grandpappy. Yeah. Look at your houses. Look at your house now. Father is a Baptist. Mother is Jehovah Witness. Son is Pentecostal. Daughter is non-denominational. And grandpappy is apostolic. That's right. You got in one neighborhood 20 and 30 churches. And everybody come out being a Christian 20 and 30 ways. And these devil deceived Christians will say, it don't matter what you believe. We all one down inside. Use the child of the devil. Amen. It does matter what you believe. Oh, yeah. Your belief is not supposed to conflict That's right. with what God believes. That's right. God says, one Lord. Yeah. The religious world says, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, these three are one in the Trinity. Trinity ain't never been in the Bible. No. It never had been in there. Yeah. It came from Rome, Italy. It ain't come from no Bible. No. God is one. One Lord. There's no God with them. There's no God besides him. There's no God equal to him. There's no God greater than him. Yeah. He made the heavens and earth alone. He stretched forth the earth by his power, established the world by his wisdom. That's right. 
What did the Apostle Paul tell us? Let us walk by the same rule. Give chapter and verse again. Back in Philippians. I want everybody to follow me in the Bible. That's it. Follow me. Yes, follow me. Mm -hmm. Amen. I want, I want all the preachers to follow me. Preachers. Amen. That, that way you can stop writing your sermons out. That's right. That's right. When you find men got to write his sermon out, he ain't no preacher. No. The stuff is already written. It's in the Bible. That's right. That's right. The Bible already said whatsoever things is written a full time is written for our learning. Right. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. There's enough information in that Bible where you ain't got to sit up all night, write a sermon, and give it a text. There's only one text, and that's truth. That's right. Give chapter and verse again. In Philippians chapter 3, and we're at verse 16. What if God said what? Let us walk by the same rule. Let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind. Let us mind. The same thing. The same thing. Brethren. Brethren. Be followers together of Wait me. Wait a minute. Be followers separate. Be followers together <laughs> of me. Now think of it. On one occasion, it is written. One say, I am of Paul. Yeah. I am of Apollos. Of Apollos. I am of Cephas. For it hath been declared Listen unto at me this. in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1. It hath been declared unto you. And at verse 11. For it hath been declared unto me, that what? You, my brother, that ye my brothers, by them which are of the house of Chloe, uh -huh. that there are contentions among you. There are contentions among you. And God knows that's what's going on around the world now. Oh yeah, contentions. There's contention. Among you. Among you. Now this I say. And you know when you're standing for the word of God and you have those that won't, it brings about contention. Amen. So one of the biggest things that cripple churches, family churches. That's right. Preachers are scared to stand up for the word because he's scared of getting a rebuttal from his family. That's right. This Bible ain't fixed up to satisfy your wife. Amen. It ain't fixed up to satisfy your son and daughter. Yeah. In fact, it ain't fixed up to satisfy you. That's right. We got to make the changes to satisfy God. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. What is that? That there are contentions among you. Contentions among you. Now this I say. This I say. That every one of you saith. This, I, this is the way folks are now. I, every one of you say. I am of Paul. That's the way folks are. I'm Baptist. That's right. I'm Methodist. I'm Presbyterian. Yeah. I'm a Baptist man going to hear holiness. Amen. I'm a Methodist man. Out of all these religions. Yeah. And listen at this real good. Now this I say, mm -hmm. that every one of you saith, I every am of Paul. Every one of you say, I am of Paul. And I of Apollos. Another group say, I am of Apollos. And I of Another Cephas. group say, I am of Cephas, and, or I am of Peter. And I of Christ. And another one say, I am of Christ. Is Christ divided? No. 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 Is Christ divided? No. Amen. What? Was Paul crucified for you? No. No. I know you was taught in seminary school and in little Bible class and in history that Paul was crucified head down and feet up. No, Paul, Paul supposed to have died at Nero's chopping block. Have you heard that? The Bible ain't never said how Paul was died. Never. never. Seminary school says Peter was crucified head down and feet up. It ain't no such crucifixion in the Bible. No. Seminary school said there's five minor prophets and five major. The Bible ain't never called none of the prophets major or minor. That's right. Seminary school said when Jesus come, Gabriel gonna blow the trumpet first. You liar. That's a lie. The Bible ain't say Gabriel gonna blow nothing. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection. That's right. Then they say so. That's right. Yeah. Go ahead. All this stuff been taught for years. Yeah. And no one ever asked no questions. Seminary school said when Jesus rose, Mary preached the first message. You old liar. That's a lie. Bible ain't said she preached to nobody. Amen. Jesus rose from the dead and all he did was tell Mary, tell Mary, tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee. That's they ain't no different than me coming here in, in Augusta and may tell Mother where. Look, tell them, uh, your husband and brothers to meet me over there at the church. That's it. That's it. That's it. Bible ain't said she preached to nobody. No. Let's come on back to Bible. Amen. Eh? Amen. Let's come on back to Bible. That's right. 
Glory to God, if you don't want the Bible as your guideline, padlock the doors of your church. And everybody might as well just go on out there and have fun because you're going to hell anyway. Is Christ divided? Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? No, Paul was not crucified for you. Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Do you hear that? Amen. How were you baptized tonight, George? Yeah. How were you baptized tonight, George? Were you baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? That's right. Or, were you or, or did someone hold the hands of a preacher and pray some cheap sinner's prayer? Amen. Were you told to join the church and you saved? Mm. You no more saved than the elephant can tap dance with Fred Astaire. That's right. Eh? That's right. Your salvation, where did it come from, Georgia? Mm. Examine your salvation and see is it in the Bible. That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, the preacher made an altar call and I helped his hand and prayed a sinner's prayer. It ain't no sinner's prayer in the Bible. No. Well, Pastor Jennings, I got baptized and the preacher said, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He done what Jesus said. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Jesus didn't say baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I want to say, Jesus did say that, but he did not. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. Look so closely at what he said. I want this to be good for preachers and so-called missionaries and deaconess. What a mess and everything else. That's right. You that got your second wives and third husbands and everything. Everything. Amen. Oh, yeah, this is for you, too. Amen. We have so much to cover tonight. I want to work on you while I have you here. Amen. Amen. All right. Matthew 28 and verse 19. What is it? Go ye therefore. And do what? And teach all nations. What do Georgia need? Teach all nations. They need teaching down here. Yeah. Oh, you got all the jumping and shouting and the hoopla and all that other kind. I ain't paying that mess no mind. No. You need some teaching today. That's, that's right. Go yet therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them how? In the name of the Father. No, just Father. In the name of the <coughs> Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. No, just baptize them, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Baptizing them in the name. That's where the preacher missed out. That's right. All you Baptists and Presbyterian and non-denominationals and Pentecostals and all of you out there, many of you was baptized Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, but you never got the name, name, the name. of that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's right. So that's why the preacher just took you in water and said, I baptize you, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Took you down and brought you up. You ain't baptized. No. You are wet. That's it. If I tell you do something in my name, name is my name Father? No. I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a husband. Yeah. But if I tell you do something in my name, are you going to say father, son, or husband, or are you going to call my name Jennings? That's it. That's right. That's right. Jesus said. Baptizing them in the name in of the, the name, Father. In the name, in the name, in the name. In the name of the Father. Yeah, how can you baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost unless you know the name you know of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? That's and right. when you know the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, I can go down in the name right. of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. But first, I got to find out what it is. What it is. Right. All right, preachers, mm -hmm. children, mm -hmm. old folk, church goers, bench warmers. Yeah. How are you baptized? How are you baptized? What did Jesus say? Baptizing them in the name of the Father. And, and of the Son. And, and of the Holy Ghost. All right, let's find out the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Matthew 20 and 19, they was told to go do it. Go do it. it wasn't done there. That's right. They was told to go do it. That's right. There was no baptism being performed there. Right. It was fulfilled later on in Jerusalem after the resurrection of Jesus. That's he right. told them, go to Jerusalem. That's right. And stay there. Yeah. Thank God until you be endued with power from on high. Amen. When he ascended above all heavens. That's right. Thank God he sent the Holy Ghost back to get the church started on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. Peter stood up. That's right. Thank God with the 11. Mm -hmm. Then Peter said unto them, said to them, repent. No, join the church. Repent. 
No, Peter said, join the church. Then Peter said unto them, repent. No, anybody want a church home, stand up. I give you a home. Peter said unto them, repent. No, I, op I open the, ch the doors of the church and give you a church home. Then Peter said unto them, repent. No, sit on the mourner's bench and get several different works of grace. Then Peter said unto them, repent. Bow your head and raise your dirty hands and accept Christ where you sit at. Peter said unto them, repent. This is where you got all this cheap man-made religion. Amen. Come on back to Bible. That's right. When you come back to the Bible, you're safe. That's right. Eh? What did the Holy Ghost say here? In Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. That's what? Then Peter said unto them, repent. All right, George. Repent. Everything in here got to repent. Repent. What do you mean repent? Notice, the Bible ain't never tell you just run and be baptized. No. He wants some conviction to set in first. That's right. That's right. You got something to repent for. Amen. Well, what I got to repent for, Pastor Jennings, for being a child of the devil. Mm -hmm. Hmm? That's what you got to repent for. That's right. All them cigarettes you love to smoke. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All that drinking you've been doing. Yeah. That bar you still got in your so-called Christian home. Yeah. Uh -huh. You got to repent for it. Repent. You got to repent for being married to that second wife because your first wife's still living. Go ahead. Bro brother adulterer. Go ahead. Eh? Go ahead. You got to repent, repent for having that woman's husband. Yeah. Because you know that woman, that woman is still living and the first wife of that man is still living mm -hmm. and you that man's second wife. Yeah. You ain't nothing but a spare tire. That's right. Repent. Are you listening? Amen. You're just a spare tire, yeah. and I'm here to take your hair out. Right. I'm here to take your hair out. Go ahead, go ahead. Repent! Then Peter said unto them, Repent. I don't care if you don't like Pastor Jennings. I don't like you either. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That goes for the pulpit. If any of you got more than one wife, you shouldn't be up here. That's right. You ain't fit to preach to a dog in the street. That's right. If there's any preachers up here got more than one wife, you shouldn't be up here. Right. All right, this is what I'm telling you. Go ahead. The Holy Ghost said. Then Peter said unto, unto them, repent. You a deacon, and you got a second wife? You ain't got no business being no deacon. You got a second husband, you shouldn't be on no organ, yeah. you shouldn't be on no drums, you shouldn't be on the choir, Amen. you should be giving up that second meat. That's right. That ain't yours. That's right. That's right. Are right, you listening? Go ahead. I don't care if you're a pastor of a church. Preach it, brother. You got more than one wife? Yeah. You's a disgrace. Yeah. Even God got one wife. That's right. I want to say, God got one wife. It's called the church. church. Yes. The church is the bride. That's right. He only got one. Amen. 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 You know, you know, we're living in a sad time when I preach about one wife and people <laughs> look at me like I cussed. <laughs> That's right. Bro. You know, we're living in a sick time. Well, I preach about having one wife, yeah. and folk look at me like I said something foul. Amen. Because when you live the foul, dirty life, yeah. and then the word come to clean you up yeah. for real. For real. Not just playing church. Yeah. If you want to play church, stay home. Yeah. It's heaven or hell. Right. There's no in between. That's right. You got a second husband, Go ahead. and your first husband living, living, you're not a Christian. No. You got a second wife, and your first wife still alive, Amen. you ain't saved. No, you're not, brethren. Give me the seventh chapter of the book of Romans. Romans chapter 7, and we'll start at verse 1. We're working on walking by the same rule. The same rule. Same rule. That's right. Mm-hmm. Let's see the rule of marriage now. Romans chapter 7, and we're at verse 1. All right. No, you're not, brethren. For I speak to them that know the law. I speak to them that know the law. How that the law hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. Wait a minute. How long does the law have power over that man? Hath dominion over man as long as he liveth. What? For the woman which hath an husband 
is bound by the law to her husband. How long? So long as he liveth. Then what? But if the husband be dead. If the husband be in prison. If the husband be dead. No, went blind. But if the husband be dead. Got a bad back. If the husband be dead. He drank. But if the husband be dead. No, dying. But if the husband be dead. What got to happen to him? If the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. Wait a minute. Amen. He, if, if he's what? But if the husband be dead. Then what? She is loosed from the law of her husband. And so then if. If. While her husband. All right, dead, Georgia. Amen. Georgia. Georgia. Amen. Amen. Georgia. Georgia. Eh? That's right. Get this now. So then if. If. While her husband liveth. While your husband is alive. She be married to another man. And you are married to another man. What did the Bible call her? She shall be called an adulteress. But she's shouting. An adulteress. She's speaking in tongues. She shall be called an adulteress. She's on the choir. An adulteress. She's the pastor's daughter. An adulteress. Your mama. An adulteress. Your wife. An adulteress. Your grandmama. An adulteress. Your sister. An adulteress. The usher. An adulteress. Do you hear the Bible talking? She shall be called an adulteress. Only reason why these preachers won't preach against it because they got a second sweetheart themselves. That's right. That's right. Now, if there's any preachers up here and you got another wife and your first wife's still living, you're not an adulteress, no. brother. You are an adulterer. In James chapter 4 and Give me James 4 and 4. James chapter 4 and verse 4. You, an adulterer is the man. That's right. An adulteress is the woman. That's right. Let me show you this in the Bible. James chapter 4 and verse 4. All right. Ye adulterers. That's the man. And adulteress is. That's the woman. No, ye not. No, ye not. That the friendship of the world. The friendship of the world. Is enmity with God. Glory to God. Amen. Whosoever. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world. You're God's enemy. Is the enemy of God. I don't want to be a friend of the world. I'm, I'm, I'm fighting the world. Fighting the world. Don't so maybe it's all about it, brother. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm fighting the world. That's right. And I'm fighting the world like the apostles fought the world. That's right. And I'm fighting them with God everlasting word. That's right. But that the apostle Paul said there in Romans. Back in Romans 7 and verse 3. Yeah. So then if. If. While her husband liveth. While your husband. Listen. While Billy is alive. Amen. While Billy is still living. That's right. Uh-huh. She, she be married to another man. And yet you married to Melvin. She shall be called an adulteress. Every time, listen. Let me make it so plain. If your married name is Miss, Mrs. Black. And the relationship didn't work out between you and Mr. Black. Yeah. Now you got your second husband, Mr. Brown. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every time you are called Mrs. Brown, yeah. you a liar. That's right. You know why? Black is still living. That's right. Black ain't dead yet. Amen. When you introduce yourself as, I'm Miss Brown, liar. That's a lie. When the members in the church call you Sister Brown and they know Brother Black is still living, the members are liars. That's right. If the preacher addressed you as Sister Black, uh, or rather Sister Brown, and he know your husband, Brother Black, yeah. is still living, he lie every time he said. Every time you sign the check, Mrs. Brown, you lie. That's right. That's right. You a liar. That's a lie. Well, Pastor Dennis, he beat me. Then the Bible justifies separation. That's right. Because the Lord said he hate divorce. Yeah. Give me the 7 chapter, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Follow me. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, we'll start at verse 10. And if there's any preachers that disagree, well, I take your question tonight. Don't wait till I, don't wait till I leave town to start hollering. That's right.